secrets. And, and the, the idea about that is that we don't really know which implant serves best for these fractures. So there are many ways to fix subtrochanteric fractures. And if you scan the literature, it's hard to compare the methods and it's hard to determine which implant um, works best in these fractures because there is a confusion in language and classification. If you look at the pertrochanteric fractures, the fracture line has to go through the trochs, like in A1 and A2 type fractures. If you talk about intertrochanteric fractures, the fracture line has to go between both trochs. So it has to be a transverse or a reverse oblique fracture line. And only in the sub, which means under, the, the fracture has to be below both trochs. And if that's mingled together and, and uh, it, it's not parted from each other, it's hard to compare scientifically and it nearly makes evidence-based medicine impossible. Now, this is the definition, fractures distal of the lesser troch and five centimeters below. And then you don't have to discuss if, if this is a pertrochanteric fracture with a subtrochanteric extension or a subtrochanteric fracture with a pertrochanteric extension. It's not a subtrochanteric fracture. If you look at the classifications, you find more than 15 classification in literature. They nearly all include um, in, in their subgroups uh, fracture lines which, which include the trochanteric region. So it's hard to compare or look and focus on subtrochanteric fractures if you compare these results. There's a new classification published in February this year in injury uh, which respects the, the prefix, the Latin prefix sub, uh, with uh, type 1, 2, 3, all below the, the lesser troch. But in their clinical um, examples, they already have an inclusion of the trochanteric area. So subtrochanteric fractures are rare, I guess. Um, Maybe it doesn't really matter, surgically, scientifically it does, but surgically not, because you have the, the same problems, which is anatomy and bio biomechanics. You have thick cortical bone, you have a wide intramedullary canal, you have a short proximal fragment and an endangered blood supply, and you have insertion of ligaments of powerful rotators, abductors, and flex uh, flexors, so your proximal uh, fragment is flexed, rotated, and varus, and shortened. So you have to get control of the proximal fragment. Now, if you look at a dislocated proximal short fragment, you might want to perform an open reduction and put a plate on, because it makes reduction much easier. But if you look at the blood supply with a reported um, risk of 33% of implant failure and 20% of non-union, you might want to go for a percutaneous approach and I am nailing, because you can see here there's nothing left in blood supply. So you don't want to touch and harass that area. So what, what options do we have? We have a non-operative option, X-fix, atroplasty plates, and nails to fix these fractures. Well, we all know that the, the non-operative treatment uh, is good for more than 50% of undesirable results, and also it has the comorbidities which go for, um, with a longer immobilization of patients. So this should be spared for special indications. X-fix, some authors report of quite good results on subtrochanteric fractures with an external fixator, but um, I guess that it's only reserved for, for um, special indications like in polytrauma, a damage control orthopedic surgery, or uh, soft tissue infections, or morel um lacerations. Some authors um, solve unstable inter- and subtrochanteric fractures um, with a primary hip atroplasty. Um, and the reason is that they say that they had two bad results with uh, internal fixation. Um, but if you look at these uh, papers closely, the last one is from 2007, um, the, the authors uh, showed that, that you have the first year mortality which is higher than in the ORIF group, you have more blood loss, of course, and you have about the same complication rate than with this remarkable complication rate of 22% in the IM nailing group. Um, Dobbs showed that he had um, three times higher um, complications intraoperatively with the atroplasty group 
and nearly double of the patient died in hospital out of that group. So this might not be the best way and approach to, to fix these fractures. And also you have all these other complications postoperatively like fracture, dislocation, misplacement and loosening. So you can also put a stem in the wrong way. Now you have the plates, you have angle blade plates, you have sliding hip screws, you have uh, dynamic compression screws, you have Medoff and the new locking plates you find in the convention area. Um, and they have one advantage, you can do an open reduction. But this also is a disadvantage because you have to go for soft tissue detachment and maybe we will hear today uh, more minimal invasive approaches. And they have one biomechanical problem, they're all extramedullary, all plates are extramedullary. So they have a long lever arm, they have no lateral buttress, they can't perform compression, it's a static mode except for, for the Medoff sliding plane, and they have a poor proximal fixation because the implant normally stops in at the level of the fracture. With plates, you have reported non-union rates of 18% and between 18% and 3% with the Medoff plate in, in some uh, papers. And the problem of the extramedullary implants, if, if the fracture doesn't unite fast enough, uh, the implant will fail due to long lever arm and soft tissue detachment. The new locking plates you find, you can use the, the contralateral distal femoral plate or specially designed proximal femoral plates. They have to prove good results, but they have the same problem like all the other plates and all the other extramedullary implants. So I don't think that they uh, will have a siege over um, a new therapy. Now I'm nailing the first results where not as good as, as expected with endonates. You had a high rate of, of non-union and shortening because it wasn't stable enough. The sickle nail, um, there are a lot of reports about especially fractures when inserting the nail and also f uh, shortening um, of uh, fractures. And in the early days, the intramedullary nails showed um, a comparable non-union rate like with plates, but the time when, when, when the, the, the nails uh, got, uh, got uh, de developed uh, more and more and third generation nails are out now, uh, the non-union rate is only 3% and which leads to uh, Gregor et al. Um, the evidence-based bottom line is that in subtrochanteric fractures you have best results with IM devices with modern designs. You could choose between the femur mode which, which is only good for maybe very low subtrochanteric fractures because you have not a very stable fixation of your proximal fragment especially in rotation. Um, and therefore you can go for second generation uh, IM nails like for example in the recon mode where you have a better fixation of the proximal fragment. With uh, new cephalomedullary nails you have a good proximal fixation, you have a short lever arm, you have lateral buttress due to that piece of metal in the greater troch and it saves soft tissue because it's a percutaneous procedure. Um, but it has one problem. Uh, there still is a wide intramedullary canal and there still is a short proximal fragment. And the problem is to obtain reduction, but especially to maintain reduction through the nail. Um, if you look at that uh, sort of subtrochanteric reverse oblique fracture and you don't care for reduction and you just slide in the nail, this will happen, which is unacceptable. And it's, it's one of the rare cases where the surgeon managed to insert a nail without doing anything to the fracture. It still looks the same. Um, and this won't heal because the cordites are too far apart and that's the, the result after eight months. It didn't heal, so it's only a question of time um, when the nail is going to fail and break and then you're in big trouble. So reported stab incision techniques um, should be performed prior insertion of the nail to ensure a good reduction. Um, and you can do that percutaneously, for example, with, with a ball spikes, like you can see here, this flex fragment here, pushed down with a ball spike and then stabilized, not only in the interior aspect, but also for virus control, um, also percutaneously. 
And this is, this is a fracture on your left-hand side. This is a, a subtroke, reverse oblique, shaft fracture. And you can see here to get varus control, you can go for a stab incision and with your ball spike, um, this is actually the case of that, that fracture. You can now reduce the fracture with the ball spike and then find your entry point and insert the nail. The same if you still have a flexion of the proximal fragment, you can go for an interior approach and interior stab incision, push down your ball spike and get control of the proximal fragment. The fascia was a bit tight. Um, and as you can see here, it's dislocated and flexed due to the powerful flexors and now it's reduced and you can insert your nail. Um, so it's great. The, in this case, reduction was obtained percutaneously, a nail was inserted and the reduction was maintained because you had an intramedullary canal. If you have a long proximal fragment, it's no problem at all to maintain reduction, not only to m uh, obtain reduction. As you can see here, you, you can hardly see the fracture. Um, and also in short fragments, if you have a good bone quality and a transverse fracture line, if you control and obtain your reduction, the nail most of the times can uh, maintain the reduction and you're well off with a healed bone. But if you have this situation, this is also uh, a subtroke reverse oblique fracture, but a third fragment. So you have no intramedullary canal. So if you do your stab incision techniques to reduce the fractures, you, you obtain reduction, as you can see here, but a nail might not be able to maintain the reduction because a nail needs cortical bone. And therefore, in these situations, you might have to th think of a surclass wiring um, to create an intramedullary canal. Now, if we, if we talk about surclass wiring, we, we lost the idea of, of, of percutaneous approach and, and I am nailing. Um, so we don't want that. If we, if we hear surclass wiring, we think of these examples, these examples, and this example. And it's not ORF, it's OSIF, it's open strangulation and internal fixation. So we don't want that. But um, not to risk too much damage, you, you can do a mini open approach, for example, with a surclass wiring in a, in a, you don't have to see the fragment, you don't have to put clamps on it, you, you just have to reduce the fracture and, and put your uh, surclass wiring around. The price you pay is lesser than a dislocated fragment with a non-maintained reduction and an alien side. Um, so normally we, we, we go for, in these cases, with more fragments, uh, we go for circularized wiring or banding to at least ensure that there is an intramedullary canal and the, the nail can do what it's supposed to do. Now what we also always do is interfragmentary compression. Um, and in nailing, it's, it's no problem at all. As soon as you fixed the proximal fragment, prior you do the disc locking, you can take a mallet and hammer the mallet onto the jig. So what you do is that you compress this vulnerable area here with a high risk of non-unions. So you have compression here and you, you uh, at least go for a lesser risk of non-unions in that area. Um, also in this situation here, also there's a fracture gap and as soon as you hammer that down, and after that you do your distal locking, um, you at least uh, achieved some intraoperative compression in this area. So in conclusion, conservative X-fix and arthroplasty are indications for rare settings. Uh, plates work well, but they have biological and biomechanical disadvantages. Uh, cephalomedullary nails do better, but it needs always a long nail. Um, the reduction should be done prior insertion. Um, if the nail can't maintain the reduction you obtained intraoperatively, you should think of a mini open circlage technique and you should compress the fracture prior to locking. Thank you.